right, good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, May 8th, 2023 to order. Just a quick note, we will return to, we're going to start an executive session, or go into executive session, and return to regular session no later than 6 p.m. Don? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we enter into executive session for three purposes. A, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirements, Purpose 7, the Open Meeting Law, General Law, uh, Chapter 30A, uh, Section 22FG, uh, to review, approve, and or discuss possible release of executive session meeting, uh, meeting minutes dated October 3rd, 2022, and November 7th, 2022, Second purpose, B, to, pursuant to Mass General Law 30A, uh, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town, and the so chair declares. <clears throat> Uh, Christopher D. Wise versus the Town of Harwich Planning Board et al. and Hall's Path. Superior Court uh, uh, number 2172CV00239. And finally, Purpose C, pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel, fire chief, finance director, town accountant, uh, town administrator. Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call vote, Julie? Aye. Mary? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Four to zero. It's a vote I so declare. <laughs> That's because we can't have a meeting. Just making the motion. That's right. Amy, all set? <laughs> Good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting from May 8, 2023, back to order. We started tonight's meeting in executive session. We approved the executive session minutes from October 3rd, 2022, and November 7th, 2022, and that's Board of Selectmen executive session minutes. So those were approved. Uh, we discussed litigation uh, with respect to Christopher D. Wise versus the Town of Harwich Planning Board at all and Hall's Path. Um, some decisions were made, but because we're in litigation, we will not be announcing those. And then we also discussed uh, strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with the fire chief and the finance director. Uh, fire chief is ongoing. The town finance director and town account, we did ratify an employment agreement with uh, her tonight. Uh, that will be announced next week. With that, would you please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you. Just, um, I'll note Larry Ballantyne, Selectman Ballantyne, is on TV tonight, uh, not in not in the audience. <laughs> Public comment and announcement. Good evening, Emily Mitchell, Town Clerk. I just wanted to make a brief announcement reminding everyone that our annual town election is next Tuesday, May 16th. Polling hours will be at the Harwich Community Center for all four voting precincts and polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Voters also have the option to vote by mail uh, through early or absentee ballots. And for voters who qualify to vote absentee, they may vote absentee in person all the way through Monday, May 15th at noon. For anyone looking to vote by mail, tomorrow, May 9th at 5 p.m. is the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot. We will be open until 5 p.m. to receive those applications, and we're turning them around next day. The deadline to receive mailed ballots, completed mailed ballots, back to the town clerk's office is by the close <coughs> of polls on election day. I did include a sample ballot in your packet, and there is one available on the town clerk's webpage as well. Any questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Tom Birch, Harwich resident. I first like to take a moment to thank all of you for your hard work putting together our town meeting from the town manager to the selectmen and all the department heads. Um, it's a difficult task and I think uh, got a little out of control with some of these bands and I, I came up with an idea. I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to discuss it. You guys take a look at it and, 
and work it over and see if you can come up with a better plan on bad in the bads. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. Anyone else for public comment? Just uh, I'm highlighting committees that have openings uh, each week and I have to go back to our voter information committee. They are still unable to meet because they don't have a quorum. We just need one more person so a committee that helps us communicate everything can function. So I ask uh, someone who isn't involved and would like to be, there's two women on the committee who are great. Uh, they'd be great mentors to bringing someone in. So I encourage you to apply for that or any other of our committees. Thank you, Mary. Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening to you and everyone present and those watching at home. Uh, just a reminder that the town of Harwich will honor um, our veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice on Memorial Day, which is Monday, May 29th, 2023. That is going to be at 9.30 in the morning. Um, again, it's Monday, May 29th, 9.30 in the morning at Brooks Park uh, here in Harwood Center. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else for public comment announcement? On to public presentations and public hearings. If it's okay with the board, I'd like to take B uh, out of order. Presentation by the Howard's Fire Department and Howard's Fire Association. It's a much shorter conversation than the first one. <laughs> Good evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the select board, Mr. Town Administrator, and all those in attendance, good evening. It's Bruce Young, President of the Howard's Fire Association. On behalf of Chief LeBlanc, Deputy Chief Thornton, Howard's Professional Firefighters Local 2124 and the Howard's Fire Association, I would like to present to you a framed photo of the members of the Howard's Fire Department and some of our retirees. This picture is from May of 2022. The last time the fire department had done a full department photo was on the anniversary of 9-11. The last time the department took an individual photo of the department was well over 25 years ago. If I remember correctly, the Sisson Road Firehouse was brand new at the time, which would be 25 years ago. This is something that should be done on a lot more regular basis. It's no easy task getting 36 members of the department together along with some of our retirees. This photo shows some of our members with only one year in the department to members with 35 years with the department. The retirees in this photo have been with the department anywhere from 30 years to 42 years of service to the town. So on behalf of the men and women of the Howard's Fire Department, I would like to present to you this photo of the Howard's Fire Department to the town to be hung here somewhere in Town Hall. I want to thank Dave Sadowski of Fort Frame Gallery and Sarah McCaskill Photography for helping us get this project done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe we can get a picture of us with the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so we can do it more often. Yeah. <laughs> Done? I'm letting them, they have their lights on, so I'm letting them pass. Yeah. If I, if I could just make a suggestion, uh, Bruce and Chief, if you haven't already, would you write down all those names and let us put that on the back? Because yeah. you know them, but uh, yeah, that'd, be, that. that'd be great. Thank you. That's a good point, because we have a lot of pictures on the wall in the firehouse that everybody looks at and goes, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's great. All right, Pine Oaks Village proposed phase four mixed income housing at Queen Anne Road, North Harwich. I'll, be, I'll begin here by introducing myself, Gregory Winston, um, President, Chairman of the Board. Mid Cape Church Homes. Mid Cape Church Homes was originally founded back in the early 70s and uh, began development with Pine Oaks Villages phase one. And I'm just going to give a very quick history, and, and then I'm going to lead directly into exactly where we're going tonight. Um, so Mid Cape Church Homes was the beginning. Um, it started right here with the first congregational church in Howard Center and expanded beyond that. Basically, the, there was a, uh, a goal within the community and within the congregation 
uh, to provide housing for the elderly people in the community um, who were in, in need of uh, lower income housing and, and more security. Um, what started off with Pine Oaks Village One in the late 70s, built in the early 80s, then became Pine Oaks Villages Two, which was developed on the same parcel, and then Pine Oaks Village Three, which is now on um, Oak Street. And, um, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the villages um, and our signage and so forth and so on. Um, in recognition of the needs of the community, the town, and the people of the town, we have um, now uh, changed, officially changed our name uh, so that although our corporate entity is still Mid Cape Church Homes, our official name is Pine Oaks Village Homes. And it is the intention of our organization, and it has been the goal of our organization for the last 10 years since I've been on the board, um, to try to meet uh, or to make a, a better attempt to meet the requirements uh, for the community for mixed income housing above and beyond uh, senior housing and handicapped uh, accessible housing. So what we are going uh, to do tonight is to make a presentation to you of a project that we've been working on for at least 10 years. And I am so, so proud, and I can't tell you how much it means to me to say proud of my board and all the people that have worked with me to put together what we are about to present to you. But before I go any further, I have to say that there's a gentleman sitting in this room that I love to death. And he sat with me hour upon hour in his upholstery shop and helped me with all kinds of opportunities as I was looking for parcel here and a parcel there and somewhere else. My dear friend, Dick Gomes, I love you so much. He has spent so much time helping me. And his wife, Shirley, as you all know, our selectman and our former representative. I am so happy that you were able to make it here tonight. You just don't know how much time you spent with me. But I'm going to go right on now. I want you to first recognize my board. There's 12 members to our board. Um, uh, not all of them are here tonight, but certainly the senior members are here tonight. Um, Phyllis Kushlanis, who's right here, is a secretary, executive secretary. She's been on the board for 20 years. Um, Deborah Bassett, who's our uh, treasurer, is right here. She's been on the board 18 years. Um, and then um, I've been on the board, in, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is those two people I wanted to recognize for their longevity, particularly. But I'd also like to recognize each member of the board that's here tonight. John Clark, Joyce Williams, uh, Laurie and Schultz. Um, who have I not? Oh, my God. I'll well, you anyway. <laughs> my, my dearest best friend behind me. Anyway, uh, I'm going to transition quickly. But what we've done is we've, we've taken an opportunity um, from moments and all, all the time that I spent with Dick talking about this, that, and something else, including Jimmy Marceline and the Marceline properties and how that we might integrate this into Pine Oaks Village Homes, um, we finally, uh, as a board of 12, uh, came together and put a core group together. And our core group, who happened to be lifelong members of this community and lifelong friends of mine as well. I'd like to introduce Bob Doan, who's sitting right up here in front. Um, he's going to be guiding you through most of this presentation. I'm going to introduce you to the core group. Deborah Bassett is, is right next to us. And Al Eaton, of course, my lifelong best friend since one year old, um, who has really been a mover and shaker. So we've divided our 12 group into four groups. And the four group, actually, what we call our core group, um, put together what we're going to present to you this evening. Um, and just uh, as we quickly move along, I just want to address, uh, I've mentioned to you elderly housing, housing for the uh, impaired or handicapped, but we know for a fact that the biggest need in this community and all over this sandy bar, elite sandbar as I call it, is a need for affordable workforce housing. So we're trying to answer the question tonight with what we call mixed income housing. So we're talking about housing for the elderly, we're talking about housing for the handicapped, which we will continue to take care of. But now we're trying to reach to mixed income and families who are in the workforce, the families that actually take care of us in the community who can't afford to live in this town or can't afford to live on Cape Cod. 
So to that point, I would like to introduce to you our developer, Mr. Jim Perrine. James Perrine, he's sitting right here in the center. Um, he, he, his company is Commonwealth Community Developers. He has a long history here on Cape Cod, uh, but he has a, an even longer history. He's from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, but he's just, uh, in his earlier years here in the Cape, he developed uh, Mashpee Village, which was a renovation project over in Mashpee. Um, he worked on that before, actually before he was formally in business for himself. Um, and he, and he's, he's done an amazing job with that rehab of that property, which also included a wastewater treatment facility and all of the technology that's required today uh, when we talk about the kind of density that's required for um, affordable workforce housing. So uh, Jim has a great amount of experience, and he's been with us and our board since 2020. And uh, he is our, our guider, and he's helping us through the process now. Um, Bob Doan is our spokesperson, and he's going to guide you through some of the preliminary information, and then Jim will take over from there. And Al and Deborah, of course, as part of the core team, um, can fill in with information and questions that, that you may have that um, I haven't um, you know, brought up to this point in time. I'd, I'd also like to just, just quickly make a, a mention to a, a mentor of mine, an incredible individual who grabbed me by the, by the nape of the neck, uh, while I was sitting actually where you are right now, uh, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> as chairman of the Historic District Commission, I, uh, I was overseeing some things for the town, and this gentleman came up to me and said, I think I have a place where I would like to see you and I think where you belong. And that's where the gentleman's name is Glenn Lowry. Um, his, he, he was the former president of the Cape Church Homes, and he's the man that hit me on the back and gave me this sort of uh, guiding light, if you may, and I didn't have a clue where he was leading me, but I followed, and that's why we're here today. And I'm very proud that we're here today, and I'm going to let, let um, Bob take it from here and then on to Jim Perrine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you mic go? Yeah. Okay. Um, Greg just gave us a lot of history of uh, our, our um, Pine Oaks um, villages. Uh, it was started uh, with an idea from Parson Al Ronander from the First Congregational Church and assigned uh, both uh, John Nelson and, and Paul Doan to work on it. The uh, organization was formally incorporated in 1975 uh, and uh, established its own bylaws. And it was to develop housing for the seniors, for uh, qualified seniors. Uh, Pine Oaks 1 was the first one. It was opened in 1990. It has 60 units. It's right off of Bank Street um, uh, at uh, 61 John Nelson Way. Then we went to Pine Oaks 2, which is in the additional property right next to it, which was uh, 38 units uh, added. Uh, and these were primarily finance, uh, financed through rural development and HUD. And finally, in 2003, uh, with the help of the town of Harwich with the land, uh, we built a two, um, Pine Oaks Village 3, and that's 65 units. And that is a total of 163 units um, that we, we supply of senior housing. And currently, uh, we, we uh, represent 49% of the uh, town of Harwich's affordable housing. Uh, and as uh, Greg alluded to, we really got energized uh, quite a few years ago to continue our search for um, land and to develop some new Pine Oaks Village homes, uh, apartments. And so we uh, proceeded on that. And um, Greg, there we go. Greg already uh, mentioned our board of directors. They're all made up of an entirely uh, community volunteers. We are uh, not a for-profit organization, strictly non-profit. So where we are in housing, the uh, Commonwealth does require 10% of affordable housing in each town uh, called the shy list. Uh, how it should be at 602 units, which is 10%, how it is currently at 333 units. 
we want to help the town of Hartwich meet their housing goals. T the needs today, uh, obviously young families, uh, municipal employees, health care workers, the people that are going to take care of us as we're getting older, certainly. Uh, employees of local business, a tremendous service industry here, and not all jobs are year-round. We have a lot of uh, cyclical jobs. Uh, and people, of course, with disabilities, and we'll continue our mission with senior citizens. So we do uh, envision a mixed income community. We'll have rentals of one, two, and three bedroom uh, apartments and townhouses. Uh, we'll be able to, on the initial uh, rental, have local preference. So 70, up to 70% will be from Harwich or within this group or within the community. Uh, of course, we'll have accessible, uh, accessible units for people with disabilities. <coughs> and all ages qualify, uh, families, seniors, and everybody in between. So the land we have um, selected or have been fortunate to, to gather is uh, off Queen Anne Road. It'll have easy access to Route 6. We're going to have walking trails and open space for past uh, activities, a little different from what we did with the, our first uh, projects, we tend to use the whole area and spread out the, air, um, the, the buildings more in a campus style. Today it's better to put them more close together but then have a lot of open space around mainly because this is a, it's a beautiful nature piece of land, trees, well trees and well wood. Uh, probably have a playground for the children and families to enjoy. Uh, we will be having a, a community building for uh, our management office as well as for small gatherings just like we do at the our current Pine Oaks villages and it is important we are going to have on-site management uh, using the same uh, uh, highly effective management policy we already <laughs> use. Now you can't barely see you have the better map here although I have to note that the it is not quite correct the tax records are a little skewed so one piece of land up there uh, we call the dog leg isn't actually included, but it does include um, uh, more on Queen Anne Road. And this is just to get a sense. It's on where Queen Anne Road goes down on the western side of Queen Anne Road down to where it meets with uh, Old Main Street. This is a little better accurate picture of what we've secured. Uh, a very good frontage on Queen Anne Road, which is we're asking to be the main entrance, and uh, different lots of land. And we've put together a whole bunch of people have come together and really share our vision on land, basically the sellers of the property. And I uh, want to recognize them. It's the estate of Emulus Hall, uh, Sandra Hall, Executrix, as well as Catherine Gavin Goff and Tom Gavin, uh, who uh, grew up in town. Alan Hall and Edward Hall. I know Alan's here Alan today. Right, yep. right over here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Wayne Colson Wayne, is yeah. one of our participants. Uh, Michael Sexton, who could not be with us, um, he's uh, part of the larger piece of 12 acres. And uh, Todd Watkins and Mark Watkins, our latest acquisition, down at the very bottom that's um, measured uh, as L. Parcel L. Yeah. So we also want to recognize Whitney Wright, who is the tenant directly north of us and right up on Queen Anne Road. Parcel B. He, is, um, he has shared his knowledge and insight, uh, plus how it's really challenged us to keep as many trees as possible. <laughs> and of course, being pine oaks, that is a major goal, as well as some other species. <laughs> uh, he, he is a, I've been a past developer and has worked on a, um, housing uh, in Hyannis. So the scope of the business is we're going to do this in uh, three phases, um, and I'll get to this slide in more detail. Um, the optimum uh, funding for a phase in uh, housing today is 80 to 100 units. That takes the best advantage of all the fundings uh, that's available. Uh, we are targeting 88 rental units per phase, and it, this will be a phased approach. Uh, this will be a mix of one, two, three bedroom units 
uh, plus uh, uh, accessible units for handicap. We believe we can support three phases and yet still keep the ratio of units per acre under 10 units per acre. We understand that's a line you don't want to go over um, if, if possible. Uh, we have townhouse, and just to see this picture, one of the features here is that we're kind of clustering all the buildings in the very center of the property. We want to leave the whole southern part um, vacant because uh, for the neighbors all on uh, Main Street, as well as to the west on the left, we're leaving quite a bit of uh, open space there, as well as some way to the, the right. Uh, to the right and to the north, on the right there is, is all uh, the power lines that go through and is uh, commercial type property. Here's a little closer picture. The, when you come in off of Queen Anne, I'll go right down to, oh, good. Yeah, coming in off of Queen, Queen Anne. Anne, we're gonna hit the um, community building uh, right there and then as we move over our first phase, will be two townhouse rows, eight each, and two what we call lodge buildings, um, which will have 36 apartments in each one. Uh, then, um, additionally in phase one, we also have to do the septic uh, treatment the plant, which will probably be way over in the corner. That looks like it's been identified as the best um, for keeping potentially any smells sometimes they do if the wind goes the wrong way with prevailing winds it's not going to bother anybody if there is um, then in phase two we'll do a couple more townhouses as well as the um, open kind of green area we'll definitely have um, a little play yard uh, for people and we don't know how big that green area is but it'll be for kind of like a little park type setting and maybe um, cookouts and things family can use for that and picnics. Um, so that, that second phase will be the two townhouses and the two buildings down below. And the third phase, way to the east, uh, will be the final uh, phase of our apartments. We do, we want to explore home ownership. Um, in that light, we want to be able to possibly put a couple houses right at um, the entrance, as well as down below um, what we call triplexes, uh, townhouses st style, we don't know exact the size, and, and those would be home ownership opportunities. The, unfortunately, there's not a lot of funding for that, and you have to seek out local funding and um, other, other ways to make that uh, affordable. Let's see. While you have that map, can I just add one more thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, while you're looking at, the, at this map here, I just want to point out something that I think is very interesting. First of all, the, uh, the Greg, se second <coughs> treatment, facility. nobody at home will be able to hear you. Oh. You're going to be at oh. a microphone. You can yeah. stand, and yeah, I think there's are. a, I don't know if there's a laser pointer. I apologize. Okay. Uh, what I would what I'd just like to point out, as you're looking at this particular map right here, um, we have taken a, a great deal of consideration um, for our butters, uh, sincerely for our butters um, to the west and our butters to the south. And if you look at the larger map over here, you can see that there's a great deal of green space and we are not planning to use access from Main Street, although our last purchase was the Watkins property, which is on the lower part of the real estate. Um, we've had feedback from public safety here in the town uh, that we, you know, that would be a good move for us for public access for emergencies and emergency vehicles. What I wanted to point out quickly before I let Bob continue is that on the north side of phase two um, and where that septic treatment system is placed, um, we purposely laid it, that, laid it out that way um, because of the prevailing southwest winds, uh, which would, and septic treatment systems are wonderful. Unfortunately, um, without public sewer uh, today, and not probably in my lifetime in this neighborhood or even Howichport and Howich Center, um, we have to make best. So uh, any prevailing wind would be toward the uh, overhead power lines, which are back there, and all of that land beyond the overhead power lines is commercial development. I think our nearest to butter is Bobby Auer. 
and my boat is over there, in the storage yard over there, and then beyond that we go toward, you know, um, you know the uh, other commercial buildings going toward the dump. So, but where those two large buildings are that go to the east, uh, most to the east there, and the septic treatment facility, those are all inside, and that's all wooded land behind it and, and below it. I just wanted to point it out for the locals first. That's all. Thanks. Thank you, Greg. So this is a, a concept for our townhouse. It'd be um, a total of uh, four um, three bedrooms and total of four two bedrooms, um, geared pr primarily for families. The floor plan kind of shows this is a small detail there, but the front, but there'll be a little mini backyard and storage shed out back uh, for those uh, tenants. This is our lodge building. This is still very preliminary on our concept, trying to make it look smaller. Uh, but this is the idea. It is uh, three stories uh, high on parts of it, and um, uh, we'll house uh, all our one and two bedroom uh, apartments, as well as a um, totally accessible three bedroom unit uh, on the bottom floor. And that's just showing a layout, uh, again, detailed. Still, this is all still very preliminary just to uh, get the concepts going, get discussion going on, on how people like the looks and what we can do, do to make it as uh, kind of Cape cod as possible. So we'll get different uh, issues that we will be sure to address. Um, we are going to plan to do um, passive uh, house. Um, so it's going to be highly um, efficient. Uh, it turns out our architects, Icon Architects, are, are specialists in passive housing and very en energy efficient. Uh, so we're um, going to do as much as that we can. It does have a cost premium up front, but in the long run, it's far cheaper to, to operate. Uh, we will need a wastewater treatment plant for capturing nitrogen uh, initially. Uh, we will course talk with the wastewater people just to see where any plans are if things change and they want to address that area this is a nice chunk of, of uh, density that'd be good to have um, sewer treatment but we'll start off with the uh, 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 highly efficient um, wastewater treatment plant uh, we're going to be protecting any wetlands it's really kind of more around of us but some does it, it could creep in, and we'll be working with the conservation department on that. Uh, we also have already had uh, environmental review of the property, and we'll, we'll definitely comply with any uh, necessary native species protection plans. It is to note it is not under uh, jurisdiction of wildlife right now. They have not identified this area as a uh, uh, endangered species area. But nevertheless, when you do work over there, uh, you have to make preparations during your building, do a scan for box turtles or other endangered species, and do barriers so they can't come in once you start your construction. Uh, and of course, um, we'll do a traffic study uh, to see what the load is on Queen Anne Road, and that'll be done, of course, prior to form formal uh, permitting. So that's pretty much the slide. Um, I would like to turn it over to Jim to talk mm -hmm. about a few things. One, um, some of the different funding sources that we should be able to tap uh, to accomplish this and particularly accomplish the multi-income aspect of it, a mixed income aspect, and also what we're asking of you and our timeline for how we see the development unfolding. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, great. Hi. Uh, first of all, thanks for listening to all of this. Uh, <laughs> And, and, uh, and we'll be uh, imposing on your patience, I'm sure, in future meetings. Uh, but uh, on the standpoint of zoning, we, uh, we anticipate going through 40B, and, which means the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, and we, but we want town support. And we want it to be something that people understand what we're doing, uh, that if there are suggestions, we're still at a stage where it's not that hard to make changes, although, of course, there are limits on what we can do. But, uh, but, but we want to try and sort of solve, you know, solve for the problems, whatever, whatever they are. And so, uh, so 
how, how the 40B process works, the timing of it ties in a little bit to our, uh, our financing. And so I'll, uh, for a moment, we, uh, there were different funding streams for different income levels of apartments. So we anticipate going for uh, some, some funds available for quote unquote workforce housing. Uh, which is pretty much, let's call it lower middle housing maybe, moderate income housing. Uh, there's another funding for, uh, uh, for let's say, the uh, more moderate income, I guess I'd say, in that, uh, uh, at, at, in the realm of 60% of the area median income, which is primarily, <coughs> again, uh, working people, but people in the service industry, so, uh, or people who are retired. So uh, the deadlines for filing for the, the various sources of funding that are available through the state, and the state allocates even sources from the federal government. So our deadline is early January, and it comes around once a year. So if we miss this one, then we, we, we have to wait a year. Um, the, uh, and we have a pre-application we have to get in in October. But in order for us to meet this, if you know, if we think there's a realistic chance, although it's somewhat tight. And uh, and the uh, so that then, in order to put in a complete application, we need to get through the we need to have our comprehensive permit from the town. Uh, to do that, we then need a site eligibility letter from the state from DHCD. So that is basically our next, you know, our first <coughs> official step to go through uh, and talk with them and apply for that. But while we're applying for that, we want to be talking with town officials and neighbors and everybody who might, you know, who might uh, uh, have an interest in talking with us about it so that we can arrange things that are, uh, that are satisfying the, you know, the town's suggestions and requirements with respect to traffic or or the board of health or anything you know anything like that get the conservation commission uh to understand what we plan and i think uh, and i think that's all something that we would like to be doing during this initial time so that as as soon as we get the site eligibility letter we'll be applying for uh the comprehensive permit with the zoning board uh, and for that, we have uh, our, our attorney, Peter Freeman, who is very skilled in this and, has, uh, uh, and uh, who's based here on the Cape, uh, Yarmouthport, and he's, uh, uh, he's among the best in the business for that sort of thing. So, uh, so I think I've covered, you know, what our <coughs> timeline. Now, one other thing I have to say, one of the sources of financing that we'll be asking for, and we don't know yet, enough to say how much, but will be from the town, whether it's through the Affordable Housing Trust or, or what have you. Uh, and so, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm conscious of when the town meeting was, that well, we missed that. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, but that's something else we need to get, we'll, we'll need to get squared away at some point. So all of this, we're still at an early stage uh, we're still, you know, we're still working on the design, tweaking things, and getting more information about the site. Uh, and and tomorrow evening, we've invited uh, the neighbors to to a meeting so that we can get some feedback from them and explain to them what we're thinking. Uh, but uh, but uh, that said, we have put a lot of effort, a lot of thought into this. We've talked to a lot of people already. Um, and we expect to continue that process. So uh, I look forward to hearing uh, from from the board and from you know, and of course over time from uh, from uh, anyone in town who cares to to uh, share with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Where's the meeting tomorrow night with the neighbors? It's uh, at the uh, Pilgrim Congregational at, at five thirty Dorcas mm -hmm. Room. What time? Five thirty. Thank you. And this is for the abutters and the abutters to the abutters. And we'll probably we'll have future meetings expanding that envelope out to, to other areas. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, we're going to start with Larry Valentine. Larry, do you have anything to say? Thank you. And uh, am I on? 
Yes, yeah. we hear you. Okay. Uh, this is a great movement to increase your housing. It's quite exciting. It's really, we we need to find a way to uh, both to work together. My only comment uh, is I very much appreciate the concept of uh, housing and uh, open space. There's, I think all of us feel, or certainly most of us feel, that there should be no conflict in open space and housing, and your concept uh, shows that. So, congratulations. Good. It looks good. Thank, thank you, Larry. Julie? Uh, thank you. First of all, I applaud anybody who is attempting to create housing in Howard, so thank you, and it looks like you've already done a lot of work. Um, I appreciate the difficulty in doing the feasibility studies and, and trying to assess where you might have some limitations and soil issues, et cetera. And of course, we as a board are concerned with water quality, so we appreciate you, you know, working hard on that. Um, I, I really, I, I like the concept. I agree with Larry. I mean, density with open space is really what seems to work. And I also love that you're, you know, including some three bedrooms because I think that's one thing we're really missing here. Um, so I just look forward to, to working with you. I'm glad to hear the collaboration with the abutters and the abutters to the abutters. It's wonderful. Um, I'd be interested in attending that meeting uh, tomorrow if I can. Uh, if not, we'd love to have you. Yeah, you know, please just keep us posted because I think it's so important. I, you know, doing permitting for a living, the one biggest thing I think is communication, yes. and the fact that when you bring people in and tell them the reasons why you have certain limitations yeah. and why you're doing certain things. I think when people understand the concept and the problems you face, I think as a community, we're all dedicated to housing. So I, I look forward mm -hmm. to working with you. Thank you. Mary. Um, I've been in this seat for two years and this is hands down the best presentation ever. <laughs> I am 100% uh, in back of you. Whatever pieces need to be worked out, You've got a reputation having already done the other pieces. Um, if I can help you in any way, please call me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. <clears throat> Don. thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, the word thank you applies to a whole slew of different people. Uh, I'm going to start off with thanking the, the folks who sold the property and having being part of a vision. Uh, yeah. So yeah, thank you. There are a number of iconic people out there, the Halls, uh, Wade, I mean, there's uh, people who have lived here for a long time and understand this is possibly the best place you could have put this. Yeah. Uh, it, it really is cited well. It, I, I thank uh, the folks at Pine Oaks uh, Housing because it, the idea of being able to grow to, into something bigger, and I've known a lot of you folks for a lot of years, it, it, it's a tremendous thing that you did. And I need to do a shout out to even though uh, Dick and Shirley are hiding back there uh, <laughs> behind a map. Can't hide them. <laughs> I mean, you went to the right. You went to the right guy, Greg. I mean, uh, he's, he goes back to be, before the whole Harwich CDC uh, because we have a legacy here. of People who know uh, how they got things done, uh, and this this is tremendous, especially the mixed use component of this because. So many of these things forget uh, the idea of community, right. and you're building a community, which is exactly. really essential for these things to work. Mm -hmm. I've seen too many of these things wind up being a whole bunch of housing of, a, of the same percentage, and it collapses through the years. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good to live in them. This is tremendous. You guys deserve a lot of praise. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Don. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Don. Anyone in the public? One second, and as soon as you, uh, after this gentleman, you stand up at the microphone and just introduce yourself for the record. Hi, uh, Mark Kelleher, West Howard. I think this is a great idea. I do have a question. Chloe's Path is a private developer. Does that mean, therefore, they will pay property taxes? And if you're a nonprofit, does that mean you will not pay property taxes? And as in some other areas, do you make payments in lieu of property taxes because you will incur a burden on the community, whether it's with schools or police and fire? I don't mean to be negative. I think this is a great idea. But Chloe's path, if they pay taxes, 
So that, if you could answer that question. Right. Uh, um, I yes, so I'll, um, uh, based on history, uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and all our um, Pine Oaks 1, 2, and 3, we reached agreement with the town uh, years ago that we pay half the taxes so that you do get coverage for particularly, you know, safety and things like that, but we do maintain our own roads and, and those type of improvements. Thank you. Just quickly, it's an invitation. <laughs> um, the meeting that we're having tomorrow night is in the Dorcas room at, at uh, Pilgrim Church. It's, it's located near the back parking lot behind the church. There's access there or access from the main street there's, there's an entrance there on the side of the church. So find us and you're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much, Phyllis. Tom Birch, owner of two properties on Queen Anne Road, one almost directly across the road from it. Just had a couple quick questions. In the, I love affordable housing, but I love it for local people. Your slideshow said up to 70%. Zero to 70 is a big range. How does that determine? I'll let you if, handle yeah, that. If I, can, if I can answer that, uh, I just did a, uh, a development in Yarmouth, uh, Yarmouth Gardens, which is 40 units, so it's a smaller development. And I sa said the same thing at the various meetings there. And the reason it's up to is because we have a lot of funders who are government organizations who, uh, who have to approve the the percentage. Uh, and DHCD in particular, the Department of Housing and Community Development. And they look, among other things, to say, is this a town supported project? And the first thing is, of course it is, because we have so many townspeople involved in, uh, in conceiving it and bringing it together. And then the second thing will be, is the town providing any funding, and we're hopeful that that will happen. The end result in, uh, for Yarmouth and was uh, we didn't have a town, it wasn't a town nonprofit uh, with town residents, but we worked a lot with the various, uh, the neighbors in the town, and, uh, and we were able, to, and the town did contribute some money, some you know, significant money, and we were able to get uh, the full 70%. So I think I'm pretty confident we'll be able to do that here, but it's, I can't guarantee it because it's not, a, it's not my decision. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, one other question, you consider two entrances to break up the burden of traffic? Yeah, I, I, I could, I, I'll attempt to answer that question for you if I, if I may. Um, it was very important for us uh, to procure the Watkins property, which we just recently procured on uh, Old Main Street. Um, we have good access on Old Main Street. Um, we, as Bob alluded to, are planning to do a traffic study. Oh, yeah. and we're quite understanding. Uh, he actually, Bob says to me, I'm a little too cautious when I'm pulling out because I don't go fast enough. We understand the, uh, the commercial traffic on Queen Anne Road and so forth and so on. And we also understand um, the more rural aspects of Main Street. So we're going to try to work between the both. Um, our goal was to keep the property toward Main Street as more rural and use the interior property and, and use the main access on Queen Anne Road. But we're open. It's basically the town. It's, it's, it's working with the, the town and how uh, particularly public safety uh, use access. Um, th that's all to be determined. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your you answers. But my two concerns are traffic and how much is for us. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more point that I'd like to bring up that I think is very important. And my dear friend Al um, brought this up and I'm kind of running with it. So you heard Mr. Perrine describe to you your concerns, Tom, about 70%. That has been a concern of mine and all of ours in as much as we're, our goal is to take care of our community. And um, in our history, um, we have about 85%. 88% of the residents in Pine Oaks Villages 1, 2, and 3 all have local attachments. So that means that they are dependent on someone locally. So our goal is that this is for our local community. There is one way that we can help. That means each and every one of us can help. 
and that's by uh, beginning a fund, and it's going to be, I believe it should be called Friends of Pine Oaks Villages. And that is an organization that I'd like to be established um, that will help the people at the upper end of the median to the higher income bracket um, to afford to live and, and allow us the qualifications and the financing for the more workforce housing. The government has a tendency to give us more for, for the affordable level. So we have to work even harder to bring that level a little higher. And uh, if we as a community, and I truthfully believe we can, we start this foundation, Friends of uh, Pine Oaks Village Homes, we can ultimately supply housing that's uh, you know coming up close to market rate and, and introduce people from apartments to homes and then into their own homes. That's our goal. Sounds good. I like your goals. Mm -hmm. um, this is just my concerns. I'm not for it or against it. I'm here to learn, and I'll be there hopefully tomorrow night to learn. Okay. Great. Appreciate your input. Thank you. Could you expand on the 70%? Uh, I believe you said in the initial presentation phase one would be up to 70%. Oh, oh each, phase. each phase. Each phase. Each, each phase. It would be yeah. each phase. And uh, uh, But what it is the, uh, you know, if the state is providing some funding, you know, some of it has to be open to anybody who's, uh, that, that's their, their thinking. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else in the public? <laughs> Mr. Gomes first. Mr. Gomes. Mr. Gomes, I would be remiss, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I would be remiss if I didn't take one moment to thank my good friend Greg and his committee for all the work that they have done. I've been involved in, in uh, affordable housing for most of my adult life, and I'm older than dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so we do go back a ways, and I think this is one of the greatest things that can possibly happen for this town. So Greg, I thank you, your committee. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, good evening, John Chory, and I apologize. I I thought the meeting started at 6.30. I guess I didn't pay attention to the agenda. But, and I, the question I have, and I'm sorry if, if, you've, if you've answered it already, is how many units in all the phases uh, do you expect to have, and then how many people do you have to occupy those units? We, uh, the total uh, count is um, possibly up to 264 units. Mm -hmm. Now, it'll be done in three different phases, yep. approximately 88 each, and it'll be uh, 88 apartments in each phase. Um, and it will, you know, that's kind of maybe a little evolving as you do your first phase, sure. then you apply for your second phase. And you can only have two phases active at one time or at least an application. So this isn't going to be a project that's going to be done in three years. It's going to be, lucky it'll be five years and probably closer to eight, eight years to complete all the phases. And in five years, how many people do you think those 264 units will comprise of? Do you mm -hmm. have? Because I've got a follow-up question to that, and I think people know what that is. I don't. I've, I've done the arithmetic, but I don't have it. I don't have it in front of in front of me. But I mean, we're talking maybe 500. 500, and the demographics of that 500 is mostly younger families and younger adults, correct? Well, it'll, be, mm -hmm. it'll run the gamut. Right. Anybody, anybody, anyone who wants to be in there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there'll be some seniors and. and okay. Uh, and how many do you anticipate school-aged children? I've done that one, too. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I, in fact, I was doing a little bit of research on, on schools, just in terms of enrollment and being, you know, enrollment has gone down. Down, yeah. And I think, uh, I mean, we may have, we may have 100 kids. We may have 200 kids included in that total. All the phases, yeah. yeah. Because I'm just wondering, uh, you know, the impact of, of schools is probably, my, in my opinion, probably the biggest impact is, is, is schooling children, obviously. And it is dwindling down, uh, but, you know, our budgets keep going up on the schools, as everybody knows. And you, you talked briefly about taxes, but I couldn't hear you. I, I know you do pay property tax now currently on your three properties, roughly to the tune of about $32,000, according to your 990 form. What do you anticipate taxes on these to be? We, we would um, hopefully negotiate the same that we do, which is we pay half the half uh, of taxes the on our just 
existing properties, mm -hmm. and we would um, expect possibly to negotiate the same with the town okay. uh, for this project. So it would be approximately half the taxes. And we do do uh, we do some of our own services like road, snow plowing, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do cover some of those services the town would normally cover. Okay. And did you say federal money was going to be involved too, or you, you have all different types of well, funding sources? It, yeah, there would still be federal and and state, and the federal money is typically allocated by the state, so we apply to the state. Mm -hmm. That's DHDA. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. yeah. And, and once you accept, and again, I don't know this for a fact, but once you accept federal money or even state money, does that 70% that you'd like to allocate to Harwich residents be affected by that? That's what I was saying before, and that, that's why it's only up to 70%. Mm -hmm. In other words, they, they, you know, we can't go above 70% mm -hmm. as a preference. Now, in practice, it might, you know, it might wind up getting to be a higher number because mm -hmm. Uh, because the people, uh, the people who live here and who work here are the ones who are going to know know about it the most, and they'll get on the list and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so for Pine Oaks Village, it's what 88 percent in point of fact right now. But uh, but the restriction or the preference would be limited to 70 percent. No, that's great. And I, 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 yeah, I fully and support the project too. I mean, it's, it sounds like a wonder. They couldn't ask for a better location, I think, for a yeah. project like this. And I, I do want to clarify that 70%. That is on the initial rental. Mm -hmm. After that, it really is, is more open. But again, our experience has been that 88% of the people are still have ties mm -hmm. to the community, mm -hmm. work here, go to school here, um, you know, have family or whatever. Um, so I think it'll, it'll still work out to be a high percentage mm -hmm. of local people ongoing. Right. And is there any more detail other than what was in the selectman's packet tonight that's available to the uh, public? Not yet, not yet. Uh, but we're working on that. We're working on, uh, again, particularly the, the, the units and how they will look. And, and we still have to match the engineering with the architect mm -hmm. because, the, you know, there's some undulations in the land, so we may have to move around things mm -hmm. uh, for that and also working with conservation. Some of the wetlands, even though it's not identified on the state maps, we believe that there is a little bit of wetlands encroaching on the property that we have to take into account. But we'll work that through the committees. And last question, when you go for your comprehensive permit, which again, I'm not that aware of, do you do it in phases? How does that, I mean, do you present all five phases? Is it five phases? Is that what three, it's, three, three phases, phases all at once? Yeah. The comprehensive permit is issued for the whole project, that's and then you phase the development of that project. That's what our, that's what, what our thinking is. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Elizabeth Harder, I want to cry. <laughs> I am so happy. I, I can't tell you how happy I am. Um, and just to let you know about a couple of things you mentioned. Um, Provincetown has a market rate fund, so I'm happy to work with you on setting up something like that. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust now has $500,000. You can use that right now. Um, and to the people who gave the land, who sold the land and made this possible, I'm just, I'm going to cry. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Spent too much time laying decking today. I'm a little stiff. But <laughs> anyway, Ed McManus, um, uh, in my past life as a selectman here in Harwich, I, one of the things that was a disappointment to me with when the housing was proposed to be used at the middle school, I couldn't participate in that discussion at all because I was an abutter and it was a conflict of interest. This is a great project and I hope to actively to participate in helping the developers and the committee, the church homes folks, to bring it to fruition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Anyone else in the public? Anyone online besides Larry? <laughs> I see one getting up in the public. <coughs> Good evening, Art Bowden. Uh, 
resident of Harwich and a Harwich uh, advocate. Uh, just a little point of history. I met Gregory in probably in 19, uh, 2017 when I was first on the housing committee and the question was he had a, a number of units that were going to fall off the, uh, 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 the inventory, the uh, affordable housing inventory and he assured me they were going to stay on and, and he invited me to, I, I didn't ask but he invited me to one of his board meetings and at the time <coughs> I was in, in, introduced to Pine Oaks 4. And I said, wow, this is great. I said, this, this is going to be, you know, like it's going to solve our problem. I mean, it'll solve all of our problems, but it's going to be a big leap forward. And I've been waiting since uh, 2017 for this moment. Uh, and I'm glad it's here now. And not too long ago, I made a, when we had the last uh, housing uh, huddle, I got up and made a speech. I says I made it and looked around the room and I says, you know, we, we talk about a lot of things, but we don't talk about building anything. And I mentioned about using a shovel. I says I was looking in the room to handle hand somebody a shovel to start building. And I think we should award the shovel to Mr. Winstead here tonight because it looks like he's gonna be the first one to to gonna use it. Uh anyways, I really applaud you. On one of the little other point I'll bring out on the 70% uh, preference. Uh, once you go into the state funding, that is pretty much mandatory. They will allow you up to 70% regional, uh, and this is what Habitat does. I, I'm, you know, I'm using using the Habitat model, and all their homes they use they can get up to 70% uh, local preference. But as has been pointed out. Uh, when, and, and they have a, a lottery. So, and I'm assuming this will be based on a lottery too because you're going, so you have two buckets. And the first bucket is the names of people that are, uh, that will make up the, 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 the 70%. In other words, they all qualify for the 70%. Now, what Habitat does, they pull so many names out, they get up to, to 70%. And of course, there's, there's the, most of the times, there's those people their names don't get pulled out, even, even though they're in, in that category. But then Habitat takes the people that are in the 70% bucket and put them in the other bucket. So now that, and this is all legal, mm -hmm. you know, so the, there's an outside chance that 70% could go higher. That's what they want. So, and that, that's a shoe for it. Uh, I remember all those. Thank you very much, <laughs> and I applaud your, your efforts. Allen Hall, North Howard. I would feel remiss if I didn't leave this room and say that this is a great opportunity for the town of Howard. And not only that, I need to reflect and thank the folks of my family that I have researched to bring to fruition a couple of these parcels to make this happen. Uh, one being Russell Hall, North Howard, uh, Eddie Hall, and my grandfather, John Emelis Hall. Because on his, when he was dying in the Cape Cod Hospital on April 2nd, 2006, he told me to look up my grandfather, Emilus Hall. And I didn't know what he was talking about then. I thought he was under medication and such. <laughs> then, I went, then I went after and researched and found that there's a big area there that the Hall family had a lot of parcels in there that was unknown. The town had no knowledge of it. And I just want to bring that to light, that I paid attention to my grandfather, and we made this happen. And I hope it works for everybody and everybody in the community. It's nice that seven villages get re recognized, especially North Howard. I have a postcard that came from my great-grandparents' house. It says, come to North Howard, I'll show you a good time. <laughs> and North Howard is a great part of the town. It's where we all started on the Heron River, and um, it's, a, it's a beautiful opportunity for the town. And I can't say anything more than that, and thank you. On what Alan just said, I'd just like to thank Alan and his family, and I'd like to thank Sandra Hall and so many of the uh, other sellers. But I think most importantly, I want to thank my dear friend Al Eaton because Al's love of ge uh, ge yeah, Al's love of history and Bob's love of history, my love of history. We started looking at a Nassus Road, which Alan can can lecture you all for hours about. But Al has a love 
for researching deeds and titles and so forth and so on. And Alan and I walked together many, many years ago through the Marceline properties. But Alan Hall and Al have spent many hours together putting their brains to work to come up with all these deeds. And then we hired attorneys. We had to go to the city. But we had attorneys uh, who would actually put their fingers on these deeds and actually say, I think I can clear this title. And then we had coastal engineering go in and survey it, and we could clear the title. So the Emulous Hall estate didn't know that they owned the access that we needed on Queen Anne Road. We found that out. But Alan Hall has been working with my cousin next over there, Wayne Colson, and, uh, and Sandy Hall from the Emulous Hall. All of these people have been so helpful. It's, yeah. it's really it's been a community. It's been a wonderful community attempt. Thank you. And I forgot to remiss, Mr. Wayne Colson also. He's been very <laughs> contributed to this because he and I are friends. We've been back and forth, and he bought some land up there, and he knew about this underway, and, and it kind of put it all together. So good kudos to Mr. Colson, too. Jackie Edston from uh, Route 28 in South Harwich, number 826. Um, this is really remarkable <laughs> to see this organization and putting together the, these parcels and clearing the title. Not easy on Cape Cod. Um, if I just look ahead to, to some of the um, designs, i uh, love to see those townhouses because you can get a fair density um, but you also have direct access to the outdoors, which is really important for families with young children. As for the apartments, I would prefer not to see uh, common card, long common corridors with access off those because it just takes one person to make life living hell for everybody else. And so if you can get that direct access as much as possible, you can do it through two-story uh, townhouses where you have one unit on the, the ground floor that is um, a small unit that maybe a senior would be in, then stairs up to a second and third story, which would be a townhouse unit by itself. So there are, are different ways. Um, looking at the plans you had, however, the architecture seems to be very innovative and is creating niches so that you're getting more outdoor, um, outside walls which gives you light and air. Because no, a normal apartment gives you a cube with only one window area. So it's, it's not as desirable a place to live. And I think desirability is really important for housing, for it to be long term, a good place to live and where people want to live. And it's not a place of last resort. Uh, Chatham has a program which I know very little about. I was just hearing about it the other day, where a renter um, renters' funds, half of their uh, rent money goes into a fund which is then um, available to the renter as a down payment for a mortgage. And it's an excellent program and maybe something the town could look at. And I think then the, the big question is how long are these units going to be affordable? And I would hope that you'd be looking at affordability in perpetuity. After all, you are overriding the zoning in perpetuity, you're increasing the development and so on, and you need this um, available to town people more than 20 years. That's nothing really in a, in a lifetime, and you don't want to see people evicted because they can no longer afford the rent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Great, thank you all very much. Thank you. Great project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I look forward to the next steps. As you as you exit, if we're all uh, going to exit, can you wait till you go downstairs to start the conversation? <laughs> as the mics in the hallway will pick up, uh, these mics will pick up the noise in the hallway. But we still have a lot on our agenda. Can I get a motion on the consent agenda? Two seconds. Two seconds. Two minute recess. Great. Um, Bill Galvin, Jim Green. Hey, um, Greg, Greg, we got to take it out in the hallway. Sorry.
Okay, his, his <laughs> dick and surely leave. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we vote to approve the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes for April 24th, 2023, and also for May 1st, 2023. Second. 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 Okay. Moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as read. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Um, Mr. Chairman, you have the member online. Is he going to be taking votes? Do you know? Oh. Larry, do you want to vote on the consent agenda? Sure, aye. aye. <laughs> That's five to zero. <laughs> All right. Uh, update from Harwich Representative of the Cape Cod Commission on year to date update. Jacqueline Eck. AKA Jackie. AKA Jackie. Welcome. As Thank promised you. a week ago, here you are. Yes. <laughs> I don't have a great deal to update you on. Um, I looked through the agenda of the uh, Cape Cod Commission this year, and they have done several um, underground cable <laughs> um, hearings, um, a solar farm. They actually did one in Harwich in 2022, uh, um, a pier in Bourne. And the Scudder um, Road or Twin Oaks, uh, Twin, yeah, Twin Oaks um, Golf Course Development, which was extremely um, difficult. That's putting it politely. <laughs> and so I think the main role of the Cape Cod Commission in recent years is um, to be the agency that hears DRIs, developments of regional impact. In other words, developments of some size that they trigger Cape Cod Commission review, and then there's several different triggers. Um, I would like to see them take on more general planning uh, reviews. Other, other, some other committees are doing that, but the main Cape Cod Commission body is not doing very much of that. They're basically holding hearings. Um, I have asked, I've asked actually every year for quite a while, if we could see the budget. And the budget, making the budget, cre uh, creating the budget is part of the Cape Cod Commission Act, and it's one of the duties. And the budget is supposed to be to reflect the duties, uh, responsibilities, the charges of the Cape Cod Commission, and so that the, the, the programs should reflect, be reflected in that budget. Well, we haven't seen a budget yet. It's not on the Cape Cod Commission website, and so I did kind of hold the ground there and say, I thought we should see it. Well, apparently it's going before a very small committee and it never comes back to the general body. So there it hangs. Um, and anyway, as I said, I think I'd like to see them take the, the broader planning views and look at issues um, Cape-wide as, as well as just being a, a hearing agency. And uh, I can't say too much because one of these cases is in litigation. But really important to do what these people are doing is they surveyed the land and they're designing with regard to the features of the land. And um, one of the projects simply takes a bulldozer to it. And um, since I sit this in a public um, record, there's over 500 mature trees being chopped down by that bulldozer. And um, I, I think you could have developed the land in between those trees, around those trees, and made a very attractive pro project. But right now, it's um, designed to be a huge parking lot with apartment buildings and very little green amongst those buildings. And again, long corridors result in uh, families having to take young children outside um, you can't keep a direct eye on them. You have to be there with them. So not a good design for families with children. So and that is the plan that they approved? Yes. Okay. And you were clearly, I, I was, no. clearly a minority vote. I was the non minority vote. <laughs> yes. <coughs> on, the, on the budget, if, it's a, if it is a, um, supposed to be done on the whole commission level, wh what's the answer that you're getting as to why it's not on the website and why only a small uh, group gets it? I'm not getting any answer. Um, this time there was a, the other times there has been no response. This time, was, well, it might be on the um, county website and I haven't had a chance to look there yet, but I will have a, have a look and dig it out. Um, I think these things should be public. 
The part, you know, it's public money. It comes from the towns. It should be accessible and available and reviewable by the commission. Thank you. Don? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not specifically to this, but I might remind everybody that uh, I thematically brought this up as part of the uh, Clean Waters Board, that there was a bias towards creating an executive committee within that, and they're the ones who deal with budget numbers and other things when it was always designed to be a big 15-town member board. Uh, I think it's a discussion we, uh, as an executive, need to have with them that we have an expectation that if we're partners in an endeavor that we get to be partners, that we get to actually have some opinion rather than having some smaller group that is within that group. Thank you. Like I said, it's not the, it's not the same as this, but it's the same kind of uh, uh, movement, which I, I personally have fought against. Thank you, Don. Mary? Um, my question, Jackie, is the, uh, the project that you described with the long corridors. Is that the Twin Acres project? Is that the one yes, you... Yes, it's not the... There's not the other... Um, projects like that around. We're seeing a lot of it. We're seeing applications for apartment buildings, and you also see some in Hyannis. And you know, what starts in Hyannis goes elsewhere. It goes to other towns. Okay. So you weren't talking about a specific one, just in general? In general and, in, and uh, specifically, but in a general way, because I don't want to get in the middle of the litigation <coughs> on this. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but all of what I've said, I said publicly. Thank you. Thank you. Julie? Um, thank you, and thank you for your report. Um, it seems to me that when Christy Senatori was here, she also talked about um, some other efforts that they've made in terms of, you know, um, housing, in terms of looking at different zoning opportunities, and also looking at the regional impact of housing and collectively working together. Um, also, we talked about uh, stormwater issues as well as the sea level rise and trying to help assist towns in low level, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. So just from my recollection of our last meeting and the information she provided, it seems to me that other than just sort of having hearings, they, they were doing some other assessments of other particular subjects that are important to all of us. So I Yes, just but they're not out. being done by the um, Cape Cod Commission body itself. There are a number of really important separate committees. There's a, a transportation group. There's um, uh, a water quality group. They, uh, a lot of things are going through the economic development group mm -hmm. in terms of zoning. I think they need to be looked at by the general Cape Cod Commission body. After all, they're the regular planning, the planning committee mm -hmm. <laughs> of the county. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any, anyone in the public? Thank you very much. I, I, I don't want to uh, you. Go ahead. Michael? Oh, sorry, Larry. <laughs> Bill, Gal Bill Gavin's <laughs> blocking your name. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, I understand why I like in person better than uh, Zoom. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, for your service. I, uh, uh, for my, uh, uh, I would prefer that we uh, that you uh, report to the selectmen possibly more often, maybe quarterly. So we have some of these issues in front of us. The budget wants certainly an important issue that maybe we can help with. I also appreciate your comment on the housing. Um, I, I like the, especially your explanation because I, I was a little disappointed in your vote when I read it in the paper as housing is important to us, but you've helped explain that, so thanks. Okay, you're welcome. John? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to just double back for a second because what Julie is saying is true too, but a lot of this stuff is staff-driven and, and it's small committees, if we're going to have quarterly reports, which I'm all for, they need to be capable of coming in here with Christy and telling us what they're up to, because I'm not even sure that uh, Daki knows as our representative. You either are on the right committee or you're not. Right. No, I think you're right. Okay. You all set? Yes. Great. And then uh, just to Thank put you. you on the spot, because new business has us um, appointing a representative to the to the commission for a longer term. Are you still willing to serve? If you're willing to have me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right, new business update. Uh, no. Vote to appoint Harwich representative to Cape Cod Commission for three-year term effective April 25th, 2023 to April 24th, 
2026. Yeah, let me see. 2026. Says 25th and 24. Okay. Sure, we could amend that later if we had to, but that's what's in front of us. I, I move that we reappoint Jackie Edston for the term specified by the chair. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Larry? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Thank you, Larry. Jacqueline, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 2023 annuals uh, CC 213 recertification of the community rating system, CRS, under national flood insurance policy. We're looking for a motion to approve and allow the chair to sign. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion, Larry? None. You'll notice in the in the packet there's a document with my signature on it, but I held it for a board vote, so we're a little late on this, but yeah. all in favor? Aye. 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 Larry? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Five, five zero. Uh, discussion board of selection policy on street lights and resident requests. So we had a resident request for a street light at a town landing, uh, the Wixon Wixon Dock area. And we have a policy that we made quite some time ago that we were not going to put any more street lights up. My grandfather was on that board. Um, <laughs> what we don't have is we do not have that I see a recommendation from our harbor master, John Rendon. We did get one from the police chief. Thank you, chief. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? Our street light policy says we're not doing them, which we need to revisit. John? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As I was there. <laughs> I just th I thought I'd uh, give you two uh, takes on this. The first one is that we also have uh, a zoning bylaw that talks about mitigating uh, ambient lighting in anything that's getting built. And the second one is that this was, uh, this was borne out when we had three selectmen full time. Uh, there was a controversy because people were asking for lights and then somebody didn't get one. Then one of the selectmen lost his job because of it. But, the, it, it came down to ultimately, if we did this and with the electricity and everything, it really needed to have some benefit. And at the time, the, the discussion centered around, is there some deleterious effect uh, on public safety that we don't have a light and there's been accidents or whatever? And that was pretty much why the police were involved in it. It was to be able to ascertain, okay, at this intersection, we've had three accidents at night and it's a dangerous place. Uh, absent that, because of the uh, bylaw for lighting, we tended to default to not do that. But obviously it's a different board, whatever you folks want to do. I personally liked being able to move on to Cape Cod and seeing stars. The more, the more we build and the more lights we do, the builds up the background lighting. And unless there's some com compelling reason to do it, I'm not really in favor of it. Okay. And what's your thoughts on the request uh, from the resident now? Well it really should be driven by John Rendon and the police chief because that's why we wrote it that way. Thank you. Mary? Um, having read those letters, uh, it sounded to me like this is the one that should be the exception and we should put a light in there. Um, you know, if, if uh, the chief has had activity there and this will help them, um, I don't think one light is going to kill all the stars. I, I agree. I, I, you know, read the info, and I think the fact that the chief is saying that it would be helpful, and that there have been issues, and I think it makes sense for safety purposes. Yeah. Chief, do you want to add? Mary, go ahead. While the chief and one, approaches. one other thing, the policy does say that we're not going to do it, except. You know, there's, there's several places in here that it talks about except for public safety or except for, so it sounds like we have the ability even with this policy. Agreed. Chief. Mr. Chair, Dave Kilmatt, Chief of Police. Uh, just for clarification, this isn't the Wixon Dock area. No. This is Cahoon Road Beach parking lot. Right. Apparently also known as Wixon Memorial Beach. That's where I got confused, yes. Um, I was wondering why they, the email John Rendon, <laughs> but I guess that there's a body of water there too. So, yeah, um, really, uh, that would be under the jurisdiction of the recreation department, wouldn't it? Which one? The beach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I did, as I mentioned in my uh, memo, 
Um, I do support the idea based on the description of, uh, uh, of the neighbor. Um, he claims he has um, support from other neighbors as well. Um, I ran just some quick numbers uh, through the log uh, search, and uh, in 2022, um, there were 116 entries on Cahoon Road Beach um, parking lot. 96 of those were what we call proactive policing. They, patrol, they just noted they patrolled the area and everything was, was copacetic. There were 14 suspicious vehicle calls and two drug activity calls and four other, like I noted a couple uh, animal control, um, beach uh, in regulation enforcement issues. So that is kind of an uptick from 2021. In 2021, there were only 24 log entries with that lot. So it does seem to support the idea, as I stated in my memo, that it looks like it's trending towards increased activity. In my opinion, um, increased lighting over that lot would probably potentially address um, some of those issues that the gentleman is talking about in his letter. Thank you. Jill, Mary, go ahead first. If that's under um, Rec's jurisdiction, should we let them weigh in on it first? That, that will be my intention. Okay. That is hopefully what Joe was going to get to. Okay. Joe? Um, I wasn't, but there's several ways that I could go with this. Um, if the request is for, the, for a light to be installed on town property in a parking lot, I would argue that it's not, then not a street light. Hmm. And so I, I think that you can simply do that because it's your property. Otherwise, um, I would recommend that if you adopt this, you, you make reference to an exception, and exception number one seems to be the closest, although that's talking about street lights in roadways. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a light in a parking lot. Thank you. Don? Actually, I was going to side with uh, the ladies on the board. But my answer to that would be, yeah, but it's going to be a street light. You're not going to put up a special different kind of light. It's going to be something on a pole, isn't it? Well, it looks like a street light and it quacks like a street light. It is a street light. Either way, we're getting to the same place. Yeah, so I mean, I'd be willing to cite that uh, exception because it it fits the exception. That was the way it was contemplated. It's, it's becoming less and less safe there. Now, keeping in concert with everything else we've done with beach parking lots, I think we should refer this back to yeah. a vote of the Recreation Committee and have the department head weigh in. But I'd be willing to entertain it's my point. Julie? So, but number one on this says street lighting for roadways adjacent to municipal facilities where the vehicular and pedestrian safety of employees and the public will be served blah 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 so and then at the end it says allows the board of selectmen so I don't there's, know. there's I mean, no I question in my mind that we can do based on the street light policy that we can put a light in the parking lot right now for me it's only letting recreation weigh in because they have jurisdiction over that beach parking lot I don't have a problem with rec saying if they want it or not but at the same token if let's just say they said they didn't want it I mean it's gonna come back to us regardless Right. I mean, if it's a safety issue, they're not using the beach at night. It's the daytime they're using it. So I'll, I'll follow the lead of a board member if they want to make a motion. I just think we should follow the process. Mary? I do think it should go to REC, but I also think to Joe's point, this every one of these talks about roadways and intersections. Nowhere in here does it talk about beaches and town property. So I don't even know that this policy applies. Back to Joe's point, if it's our property, I still think it should go to REC, mm -hmm. but it's outside of this, I think. As long as we get to the same place, I don't want to overcomplicate it. Yeah. yeah. Don? I, I don't want to overcomplicate it either, and Julie would be one of the people who would know about this. Is We're not talking about a, a hooded special purpose parking lot uh, lighting system. We're probably just going to put something on a pole that reaches yeah. out. Right. That's exactly. a street light. That, yeah. right. And that has no hooding, it has no aiming, it's just going to illuminate the area. So if we get an opinion from Rec and Youth, we may be making more out of this than we should. Uh, I have a feeling they're going to agree. Right. They're, they're not going to want to promote the activities that are going on there. Right. No. And COVID exacerbated that, and now we're at a point where we either pull it back or it's going to get worse. Yeah, because what are they doing at night? The, the Rec isn't running programs at night at the beach. Oh, which along I plunged. No. Sure. <laughs> I followed. Uh, I didn't see you, you plunge. Can you get this, Derek? Uh, 
Larry? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, the comments that we should not overcomplicate it. I'd, I'd like to move ahead on this, uh, whether it's a waiver or not. My only comment is that, uh, I know Tom Leach brought this in front of the uh, town meeting several years ago about light pollution. And at that time, he was mentioning uh, different uh, a lighting structure that did minimize light pollution. So I think we should consider that and then move ahead. Thank you, Larry. Anyone in the public? I'm, I'm, going, to have to, I'm going to have to leave Michael as well, so. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Larry. You. Vacation. Um, Julie gets that on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll discuss it. <laughs> the, um, the second note from the police chief was uh, relative to the sign and the size of the sign. Joe, mm -hmm. can you follow up with DPW on a, a more appropriate sign size from the parking lot, please? And thank you, Chief. So you're gonna send it off to Rick? Yes. I don't think we need a vote to do that. E. E. Uh, approve fee, propose fee structure for su uh, supporting cultural affairs programming. Um, we took this up once before uh, we did advertise a public meeting on this, not a public hearing, uh, in concert with our policy. So really, it's just a motion to approve at this point. Uh, and then I will uh, allow for anyone in the public to comment once we get a motion. I'll make a motion. Do you want to make one? I, I've got a comment. I'm not going to. There's one of these okay. uh, fees that I really am against. Okay. I'll you move. want to have the conversation first. Go ahead, Don. Oh. Well. I mean, uh, you guys know, and I've said this in the past, I've been president and a board member of the Junior <laughs> Theater, and I've been a president and a vice president and a board member of the Chatham Drama Guild, so I'm pretty familiar with community theaters. Uh, when you put on a show, it's not just scenery, but you wind up having to pay rights fees per night, uh, and there's a nut that you have to achieve in order to be able, because you pay the artistic director also. Um, just a number here. If, say, the Junior Theater were to use this uh, just for five days a week, for three hours, with the uh, $45, you know, times three, uh, and they did that for a seven-week period, it would be $15,225 for 501c3 to do that. They'd never do it. Uh, the, the, uh, I think if you do this, you are committing to the one-offs that you're looking at right now from uh, uh, to it or whomever uh, that w wants to put on a live musical thing because you don't have the same production values. Uh, but sets have to, you, you want to keep them in place, even if you're just going to rehearse, which I've said in the past, the junior theater does. They're always rehearsing the, th the next production behind uh, the one that's already on. Uh, this is absurd. They'd never be able to do it. And I've asked uh, Sue Kossoff, their uh, board uh, chair, and, said it's, it's completely worthless to them at this structure. So whatever you guys want to do is fine, but understand you will not be getting like sequential night after night performance performances like plays. My only comment on that, this is a general fee structure, not assuming a group that would want to use it that much. We do fee waivers constantly, and anyone can come before the board and ask for a fee waiver, which I normally don't support. But <laughs> in, in a, um, he's in not a, writing a, a check a, for fifteen grand. No, but in a situation like you're talking about, I would hope that that organization, um, which we we put up already in one of our buildings, right. needed to use this, that they would request from the board of selectmen a fee waiver or a reduced fee. Uh, quite frankly, I'd love to see the junior theater move into this building and have it be a completely different uh, fee structure and then be able to do affordable housing on the Sisson Road lot that they're on so we could move two needles forward. So I think a lot of time and effort went into this. Don, I agree <coughs> with you um, on large groups for multiples. <coughs> I don't believe that this is what this is getting at and I believe there's always room for a conversation and an amendment to this. Uh, this is quite different from our community center and the rates at the community center. We have a lot of very inexpensive space. This building being as scrutinized as it is, I think it's important to bring in whatever we can for revenue. And I'd rather hear a complaint later that it's too high and have an opportunity to lower it than start low. That's just my opinion. Mary? Um, I agree. I, let's, let's get it out there. I trust Kara, having done this previously, that she would know how to handle that situation 
if one of our local nonprofit theater groups came to her. Um, so I, I think we should approve the fee structure as she and Joe have proposed. Julie? Agreed. Anyone in the public? Anyone online? Now I would take a motion. I move that we approve the fee structure for supporting cultural, cultural affairs programming as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Three, one. Wait. Oh, Larry's gone. He's gone. He, he left. He's I'm not vacation. ignoring him this time. And Bill tilted his head so I'd be able to see him. Um, review and take action on uh, General Law 268A, Section 23B3, Disclosure of Appearance of Conflict of Interest from Craig Chadwick, uh, Planning Board. Uh, I sent the board members the paperwork today. Um, he did get a, a ruling, and this is no different from the last couple we've done. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? I move that we uh, vote to approve his request uh, for a waiver from the conflict of interest uh, implications. Second. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? Just that I think he did a lot of due diligence, and I credit him for that. Not everyone would go through that whole process. So thank you, Craig. Absolutely. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. We get a motion on G. Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve a 2023 weekday and Sunday amusement license renewal for Grand Slam Entertainment, 322 Main Street, the amusement type video games and batter's boxes so that I can go there. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Strike that last part. <laughs> and I'm not going. <laughs> uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. And debrief on 2023 annual town meeting. Joe, I'll start with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in a moment, I will rely upon the uh, materials that I provided you in your packet um, regarding town meeting. Uh, but as some of you have heard me say anytime I talk about town meeting, uh, the first thing I want to say is thank you. And that's to uh, the voters of the town of Harwich, first and foremost. Um, the work that we do for town meeting uh, encompasses more than a year. Um, I say that because we're 363 days away from the 2024 <laughs> annual town meeting. Um, so um, always a thank you to the voters because uh, they are the ones that adjudicate. Uh, they are the ones that determine and uh, without them participating and certainly without their support, um, we wouldn't have the government and the town that we have. Next, of course, would be to thank uh, every one of the uh, department heads uh, for their uh, efforts. Again, it is an uh, ongoing annual effort. Uh, as you see in my memorandum, we're meeting tomorrow, uh, May 9th, to um, develop the project and project plan and timeline uh, to dispose of uh, the articles and the monies and, and the actions that were voted at town meeting. Uh, and I'll have an update for this board later on uh, in this quarter, if not in this month. Uh, and last, but by no means least for thank yous, I would be um, not allowed back in the office if I didn't thank uh, Megan Eldridge, uh, Danielle Freiner, and Patience Cabrera-Smith. Uh, they are the glue that keep me together um, and support me in, in a way that I can get my job done. So um, uh, certainly a heartfelt uh, thanks to everybody uh, and, and, and certainly the board, um, no one knows better than I at the time that you folks put into this. And um, personally speaking, I loved the engagement level of each of the board members um, at town meeting, and I think um, you all did uh, a fantastic job. Other than that, Mr. Chairman and members, I'd be more than happy to talk about the memo. Thank you. Uh, Julie? So yeah, I think you know. Obviously, we have a lot—not a lot of time, but more time than I'm used to talking to in the last month or so <laughs> on, on town meeting prep. A um, couple things, uh, you know. I happened to be looking at Orleans uh, Warrant the other day and all the information that they have online, and they have some um, some really great info and videos, and they talk about different articles and give a more comprehensive description. And I'm thinking that that is something I'd love to see us do more of because the more information that's out there, the better. Um, another thing that I want to bring up, I found it really disconcerting 
how many times we forbid people to speak at town meeting, even though they, you know, asked for permission and identified themselves. And I understand that sometimes, you know, if it's a budget item in Harwich, there may be a better philosophy behind why you would say that. But I was really, really disappointed in seeing a few people try to restrict the superintendent of schools from speaking on an article. Yeah. And matter of fact, so, so disappointed in seeing that because a few people nearly prevented, except thanks to our town moderator, Mike Ford, prevented him from speaking and he speaks for our school district. Mm -hmm. So in those few people uh, saying they didn't want him to speak, as a department head, that's ridiculous. He has information that is pivotal to the voters. So I didn't like that, and I also thought, and you know, I believe that we can look at changing our by, adding a bylaw that allows our moderator, when he has a, a, a select few, rather than having to go and take the vote, you know, that we can change it. And I think we should really look at doing that. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I don't think that that's really the method for, for educating voters. So that's another thought. Um, I have another item that's really more related to the trust. I'll bring that up at a different time. Um, but I just think that those couple of things that were takeaways for me. The town meeting went well. I was happy with the way everything went. I think, you know, the voters were attuned to what we needed to get done and supported us for the most part and all of that. But I do think that there are improvements that could be made. So. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Julie, will you send me an email mm -hmm. outlining what you want to see in the bylaw? For yeah, the I will. Your Mayor? charter, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor. Right. Mayor. Um, a couple of things. Uh, watching uh, the newspaper and seeing the other towns meeting, I forget the number now, but East Ham, which is so small compared to us, had way more people than us. Uh, and I believe they met on a Saturday. And I know we've talked about that before. I really think we ought to look at that. I, I just find it so disturbing that so few people come. And at least if we tried a Saturday, the Saturday during COVID, I think Anita said it was more than the year before. So that was uh, one takeaway. The other, um, thing that I was pleased with but very surprised is the amount of time we debated the capital plan which didn't spend a nickel and then nothing on the budget for the capital plan was pulled out mm -hmm. I that to me is a total mystery mm -hmm. I, I don't understand that so that's just uh, I need to go back to school to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also email Okay. Change, yep. Mary, you'd need a Ouija board. <laughs> there is no way of figuring that out. Um, I will say that the special meeting after the failed override uh, that was held in town was on a Saturday, and it had well in excess of a thousand people. They were uh, they used the overflow into the uh, all-purpose room, and they had to have screens elsewhere. I mean, it was so populated. Uh, so it really has to do with convenience. Uh, I'm not sure that if you're not a government geek, two nights is kind of a, a lift, especially we, yeah, we have a combination of older people and people who have kids in school. The ones who have kids in school have to get their kids ready for school. They're not going to be there until 11. Um, as I know the, the one comment that was not made here, and I actually supported one of these, but... Uh, in terms of doing anything that relates to a petition article, uh, Tony Schiavi actually wrote something uh, on Facebook that made a lot of sense. Uh, it, it talked about delving into the possibility of tying this to a ratifying vote at a town election afterwards so that it wasn't just... Uh, and I mentioned to each of you that night, it, it also felt to me like if we changed our own attitude, instead of t putting them at the end of the meeting where you're pretty much sure that the only people who are there are ones that probably put the petition article in, if you want a robust debate, mm -hmm. put it somewhere near the budget on the first night uh, when everybody's there and you got them captured. Um, in terms of the other stuff, 
Yeah, you know, the easiest way to do that in the charter change would be to require that I anybody, in, uh, irrespective of what the department is, any department head of any sort should have the right to opine on town meeting floor because that's more important than where they live. Uh, they represent the town. Exactly. And it would be a rationale that would be easy to sell to the public that, you know, the reason that we're not asking is because they run the town. Right. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Um, I could go on for hours. Jamie <laughs> might not like that. So we'll, uh, I'll keep it brief. But uh, I will be bringing back um, several of these <coughs> things to talk about in the near future or requesting of the new chair uh, to bring them back. Um, thank yous are endless. Uh, our town clerk did an amazing job. Channel 18, uh, Jamie and her whole crew did an amazing job. Um, Finance committee. The, the debate was an excellent, excellent, excellent debate. And I do give a lot of credit to Bonnie uh, Bridges, I think is her name, the plastic uh, to go container mm -hmm. uh, petition ban, and Patrick Otten for, for rallying the troops the way they did. Mm -hmm. And they spent a lot of time out in the public handing out flyers and getting people to town meeting. Um, and no matter how I say it, I'm sure I'm going to get lit up on uh, social <laughs> media. Uh, I, I don't, um, I, I don't think in any way it's okay that 240 people were at that meeting and 130 people made law for 13,000 people. Mm -hmm. It is the town meeting process, but to Don's point, um, maybe we put them earlier in the, earlier mm -hmm. in the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, to Mary's point, I do believe that this 7 o'clock start time and 11 o'clock keeps a lot of people at mm -hmm. home. It's mm -hmm. time to change town meeting. That would be a two-year change because we're going to have to change it in the charter. Right. So that's not going to happen next year, but it's a lot to ask for people to drive home at 11 o'clock at night. Um, so I think that the most critical thing we can do, um, you know, we've talked about location changes, we've talked about uh, time changes, day changes, but it's probably time to stop talking if we want more than 250 to 500 people to right. be at town meeting and make the decision. So creating a law on plastic to-go containers um, which you know affects our council on aging, affects Meals on Wheels, affects a lot of things that it didn't. I don't think were contemplated or even debated. I, 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 and and in, in the spirit of debate, I thought it was great. It was appalling to me, to Julie's point about people being told they can't talk. It was appalling to me that we had people from other towns, specifically Brewster, that had lost that article the night before coaching speakers on their on their behalf in three separate times i had to get up to tell the moderator that the non-residents that were in the room that were supposed to be sitting in the bleachers were behind the podium and then even tried to speak mm -hmm. which is the objections that i made mm -hmm. and to the one um, young lady that said she's now a resident and a teacher here but she was a non-voter she's still part of the organization that was being represented and speaking to the voters behind the microphone and telling them what to say. And that is appall absolutely appalling to me and, and goes against everything that we, sh we should stand for. So as much as I agree with department heads and we should completely mm -hmm. change that rule, mm -hmm. um, Scott Carpenter, is the, the, his, his budget is almost equal to the town budget. He should absolutely be able to speak and it was an embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Right, it was embarrassing. Yeah, they were yelling out. It was. Um, so I will, bring, I will bring some of this back, mm -hmm. but the, the thank yous could go on and on. Yeah. I, I do think um, we got a lot accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was for all the discussion that, that, that happened before town meeting about amendments to the uh, budget for positions, there was not one question. Mm -hmm. It sailed through, and, and it proved to be true. The only thing in the capital plan paid for by free cash that was even debated was the cultural center or 204 Sisson Road. That was it. And that was clearly a movement to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we did an excellent job. We did a great job educating people. And I think we came out of town meeting with a lot of great things for the residents of town of Harwich. And uh, I'm proud to live here. Joe, do you want to go over the memo? Um, certainly. I think we covered most of it. And then, Mark, I, I see you. So I can tell you that there is a Scrivener's error in the uh, materials I provided. Um, so there's just the 
um, final results, so to speak, as I call them, not as uh, um, our town clerk and others more skilled than I. Um, the um, reference under Article 42, that was not water retained earnings, that was free cash. But um, you know, the point I wanted to bear out is when you see the result and the vast majority are adopted, um, you know it was a good, um, I think it was a good result for the town. Thank you, Joe. Mark? Hi, Mark Kelleher, West Howard. Um, one thing I read last week in the Cape Cod Times is one town grouped all the non-controversial articles together. And they did it uh, like a unanimous consent. Because when you think about it, a lot of the debate was on the petitions and just a few articles. And I'd, I'd recommend that because uh, we're all agreeing. Uh, two nights late, you want to get young people there. You know, we could we could bundle a lot of things together and get out and solve it. You know, get it passed and move on. So thanks. Thank you, Mark. And to that point, I, I did speak to the chair of the CPC committee today and asked if he would bring it to his committee before we bring it back to this committee about grouping the CPC articles mm -hmm. because the other towns are doing that right. now as well. And that'll take 13 articles and make it into one. So mm -hmm. thank you, Mark. John. Uh, John Chory, Harwichport, and uh, I just want to congratulate the selectmen, Joe Powers. Channel 18. It was a great town meeting. You know that's what it's all about. We get up there, we discuss our points, and we, we vote on it. Uh, just a couple suggestions. I mean, some of them have, have been covered. Uh, Julie mentioned Orleans and the warrant. I saw uh, Chatham's warrant also has a lot, a lot of information in there. And I like information, and I think a lot of people do. Uh, maybe suggest and just look at the Chatham's warrants too, and see what we can blend together. Uh, the Saturday meeting. I think that's a great idea. And. Uh, like you say, driving home at 11 o'clock at night for folks is, is a <laughs> tough thing. Uh, I think the biggest thing, and I've, I've, I've talked with you, uh, Mike, about it, is the clicker, you know, to register votes. Uh, uh, Chatham instituted it this year for the first time. Uh, we spoke about maybe talking with Chatham where we could share the clickers. Uh, it seems like we have our meetings before they have their meetings. I think it would uh, move the meeting along definitely a lot quicker. We would have to swear in tellers and do vote counts, which sometimes can be maybe not as accurate as we'd like them to be, the, the clicker counts. Uh, I think we'd like to uh, check into that. I've also spoke to, to some folks uh, from Chad and some friends of mine, and uh, it removes the intimidation factor from some folks of being, having to stand up and voice your opinion, yes or no. I can see the reason if you strongly believe in something or disagree in something, you should stand up and, and, and say that. But some people feel intimidated at that, so they, they don't vote either way. They sit down and don't vote. Uh, the clickers eliminate that. Uh, I think Chatham paid $30,000 for their clickers. Uh, we go in half and split it half. We share multiple things in this town with Chatham already. We share the golf course with them. We share the marina with them, the school system, obviously the waste treatment set plant. Just a thought. I think it would help move the meeting along and give a much more accurate count on, on votes. So, and thank you. And it was a great town meeting. Look forward to another 363 <laughs> days. Joe. You got it. Thank you. John, thank you. Will you send me that in an email, John? Sure. Thank you. John? Uh, just one thing relating to uh, what Julie said. I want to give a shout out to our, our new IT director. I mean, yeah. I've had a conversation yeah. with her. And she had a heavy hand involved in the development of the Orleans website. And she has big plans about what she could do for ours moving forward. So that's, a, that's something she might want to hear. That's great. It was really, it's really complex. Anyone else in the public? Town Administrator's report? Uh, thank you. Just um, pleased to announce uh, an appointment of uh, Edwin uh, Jawinski to be the new uh, groundskeeper one uh, for Cranberry Valley. Um, he replaces um, a promotion within, so uh, we're still fully staffed and great to have Edwin coming on board and joining our team. Thank you. Selectman's report, Julie? I don't have anything except I'm glad town meeting's over. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor? No, all set. Don? Just been tooling around town. Larry? <laughs> Motion to adjourn.